prisoner. You have been tried by court martial and found guilty of treason to the German protected government of Norway. You sentence is death for military execution. Shoulder, arm. About, face. Forward, march. Good morning, General Hayden. Good morning, Herr Roberts. Is that all you have to say to me? Yes, sir. Oh, come now. Uh, let's be a little friendly for a change. Your Honor, is very kind. Uh, really, General Hayden, you, uh, you should uh, dress more warmly for a Norwegian winter, like my good friend, Mr. Dahlberg, did. Uh, you want a smoke, sir? No, thank you. General Hayden, will you allow me with the greatest respect to point out the advantages of siding with the new order? A warm overcoat? And a pair of fair lined gloves. I don't sell myself that cheap. Traitor! Get off! Run! What's the use of trying to win him by kindness? You see, Your Excellency, how much he appreciates it. What do you expect me to do? Shoot him? And have a rebellion on my hand? No, Dalberg. Just to get him over to our side. And that will be the end of the free Norwegian movement. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Radio Norway, broadcasting in English language for the benefit of our dear friends across the sea. You'll be glad to know that things are going well here in dear old Norway. The people are prosperous and contented. There is practically no unemployment. And the death rate from disease is very low. Under such happy conditions, it is most unfortunate that outsiders should still be coming in and trying to stir up trouble. One of these spies, an officer of the British military intelligence, has just been captured and executed. This British officer refused to tell her we'd gotten into Norway, he refused to name the accomplices who had sheltered and fed him. Therefore, and this is the unusual part, the Germans did not hang him as a spy. He was tried by court-martial and found guilty of treason to the present Norwegian government, which permitted him the good fortune to face a fighting squad and die like a soldier. And so we conclude our news program with Mr. Lambert reminding you that our broadcasts are absolutely truthful, absolutely uncensored, and absolutely unsupervised. Rotten luck, sir. Courtney was a good man. One of our best, for I wouldn't have sent him on such an important mission. Why did he fail, I wonder? I can't imagine, sir. Norwegian was perfect. Too perfect, perhaps. He spoke the language like a scholar. Have any officers who speak it like a native? I know of only one, sir. Lieutenant Falcon of our three Norwegians. I know the boy. But we can't send one man again. The mission's too big, too important. We might turn the show over to someone in the commandos. A splendid idea. I know of one of those chaps who could handle it, if anyone could. Does he speak the language? Like a lumberjack. He had to learn it to boss his men when he ran a logging camp up in Canada. A Canadian, eh? Very good. Look him up and ask him to drop in for a chat. Very good, sir. Hello, Bob. Hello, Ralph. What brings you out this bright early morning? All King's business, of course. As a matter of fact, I've been down to the club looking for you. So? I said, do you have any trophies? Trophies? Well, yes, I have a few. Why do you ask? Curiosity, that's all. How'd you like to become the owner of the general's right arm? His right arm? Why not look bad over my mantelpiece? Hey, you interest me. Tell me more. He'd be willing to cut it off and give it to any man who could get General Hayden out of Norway and into England. Hayden? 
Oh, yes, the planes of the Norwegian army staff. Where are the Nazis hiding? In prison camp, Fangler. Hang Fangler? <laughs> Why don't you ask us to kidnap Hitler out of Berlin? Which, incidentally, wouldn't be a bad idea. All right, I'll tell you what. If you succeed with this job, we'll give it up. <laughs> Fine. Well, let's go to get the general's right arm. Well, this little town has now become the most important harbor in all Norway. Marloy is a base for German submarines and surface craft. The enemy has built up big supplies of fuel, oil, coal, and munitions there. Then, sir, I suppose the objective of the planned raid is to destroy everything of military value. And, of course, to gain experience of invasion of the enemy coast. Your mission, however, will be to realize a second objective, equally important. Captain Dean has told me, sir, it's the liberation of General Hayden so the commando raid can pick him up at Malloy. That's right, Captain Owen. The staff needs him to lead our free Norwegian forces. He is the one man that all Norway will rally around. Well, let's see. Prison camp is quite a ways inland, entirely surrounded by mountains. No chance to get away by water. We'll have to find a trail across the mountains from Fangsdorf to Malloy. Well, we lived through one night and the commanders are on time to pick us up at dawn. We might get away with it. Lieutenant Falken. Are you sure you can identify General Hayden? Yes, sir. I've had the honor to serve under him, sir. And of course you'll go along, Falcon. Thank you, sir. I hope you will thank me a week from now. That's all. I'm afraid you won't make a very convincing tourist. Perhaps not. But I've got to have someone who knows General Hayden or I won't get that new right arm. I don't see anything very wrong with the right arm you're using now, Captain. By the way, you'll need a communications expert. I'll have a man report to you immediately. Thanks, Ralph. Come in. Sergeant Harry all reporting, sir. Now, don't tell me you speak Norwegian. I speak it like a native, sir. In peacetime, I was wireless operator on the Norwegian steamship. Fine. Glad to have you with us, Harry. Uh, make yourself at home. Uh, do I get you right, Captain? I said make yourself at home. And if you're waiting for me to return that salute, there. Does that make you feel any better? And uh, take off that tin hat. Take off me hat on duty, sir? And stop calling me sir, will you? The name is Bob. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, that'll sound fine in Norway, won't it, from one citizen to another? We're not going in uniform, two officers and a sergeant. We're three good friends who've been on a holiday up in the mountains. You understand? Yes, sir. Bob. That's better, sergeant. Just call me Harry. All right, Harry. That's better. Bob. <laughs> Uh, take care of that call, will you, Harry? What shall I say if it's a lady? Ask her if she's got a friend for you. Are you there? It's a Lieutenant Falcon on his way out. Oh, yes, the third member of our expedition. We'll get acquainted with him while I finish dressing. Who's there? Lieutenant Eric Falcon, sir. Come in. Hello. Who are you? Sergeant Harry Hall. Sergeant Hall, don't you know what to do when a superior officer enters the room? But off I don't. <laughs> and never you mind about that Sergeant Hall business. <laughs> Just call me Harry. Hello, Bob. <laughs> Meet our pal, Eric. Yes, we've met before. Uh, by the way, we're not bothering with military discipline this trip. 
So I, I've noticed. Well, isn't that what we want? Don't you think we'd better break the habit of saluting and sirring before we get into enemy territory? Of course. Uh, I'm afraid I wasn't thinking. <laughs> well, how about a whiskey and soda? I uh, don't suppose you've ever had a drink on duty before, eh, Harry? No, uh, well, <laughs> hardly ever. <laughs> You'll find the mixings over there. Yes, sir. He's our uh, communications expert. Uh, don't worry. You'll do all the talking when we're in Norway. Uh, sit down, Eric. Is there anyone at Fangslet who's likely to recognize you? Well, uh, I might run into someone I know anywhere in Norway. But there's only one who'd be sure to recognize me after two years. Girl, if we need help, uh, could you go to her? Oh, of course I could. We, we were engaged. I don't mean to be personal, Eric, but uh, what happened? Why didn't you marry? And live under the Germans and their filthy new order? No. Now the war changed everything. But she couldn't see it that way. Hello, Freddy. What you got there? Orders for Captain Owens. Personal. Weather conditions favorable. Take off within an hour. Wait until I acknowledge orderly. Well, fellows, Eric, Harry, here's to success. Landing will be hazardous, sir. But as soon as we get to Fangslet Village, our agent will take care of them. Has the password been arranged? Yes, sir. And transmitted in shortwave code. Password is Hayden. Very good. Every detail has been figured out, sir. As soon as they get Hayden out of prison camp, they'll signal us by shortwave radio. On receipt of their signal, the commander expedition starts. And while they're crossing these mountains here, we'll be crossing the North Sea to meet them at Morlai. I hope it comes off that smoothly. Came down just like a snowflake. <laughs> Where's Bob? Oh, well, he'll be long in a minute. I saw him make a good landing. Yeah. Here, I'll help you with it. Go easy, go easy. That's our only chance of getting word back to Windsor. Raise your hands. Where do you come from? Up there. I know that, but from what country? 
Answer me. minutes in Norway and they're after us already. That's a tough break, Eric, but it couldn't be helped. Well, come on, let's go. General order to all garrisons. Three British parachutists have just landed in the ranks squadron. They have already killed one of our men. A ring of steel is to be thrown around the whole district. Put every available man on the hunt for them. End of orders. Oberst von Ritter. idea of where we are now? Well, we're, we're right about there. Let's see. Let's go. This is the right way to the prison camp? Oh, yes, yes, just over that hill. That's our town, Frankslet. Well, what are we waiting for? But we can't go down there in broad daylight. Why not? We have to find the secret agent Captain Dean told us about. Well, come on, there's no time to lose. Which way, Eric? Around this way. Hold it. What's up? Wait a minute. my name? Mr. Samling. And what do you call yourself? Hayden. How many are you? Three. And we've got to get out of sight quick. Come with me. Come along, boys. When did you get back? Well, uh, a few days ago, uh, on business. And you didn't come to see me? Well, uh, I didn't know you'd moved to Fangslet. Where are you living? Here. Uh, can you get rid of your friends by this afternoon? Well, we're, we're very busy, but you know I'll try, Inga. Remember, I'll expect you.
What is in that box, gentlemen? That's our portable wireless set. Who are you? My name is Eric Falcon. You are young to travel underground. Not too young to serve my country. I know, my young man. But when it comes time to die, you will not know how. Now, don't you go scaring him. But you'll only frighten me. You are all right. You and your leader. I can feel that. We would be all right, Mr. Samling, if we only had something to eat. It is a privilege to feed those who travel underground. Excellency, I've done everything possible. Answer me. Where are they? Frankly, I don't know. So, you are the goal leader of the district. You have your secret service. You have the cooperation of the Gestapo, and you don't know where they are. Tell him, my dear. Tell him. With the beggar sampling in the Brun Garden. I recognized one of them. Are you positive? I've had dinner with him, danced with him. We grew up together. His name is Eric Falcon. Thank you, Miss Beckerin. May I suggest a reward for this young lady? May I suggest that you give your orders to the Gestapo? Your Excellency. Point, Eric, you see? So? Now then, you know what you do, don't you? Shh. Someone is coming. I don't hear anyone. You wouldn't. You are not blind. The steps are coming to my door. How many are there? Only one. Only one, eh? Let him in. Who is there? Officer, state police. Come in, sir. Good morning, officer. Uh, Lieutenant Falcon. So, you found us already. Very efficient, aren't you? Yeah. We are very efficient. Put your guns on the table. And back up there again, a wolf. Raise your hand. You too, Samling. Should we send him, sir? <laughs> Perhaps we shall have something to say to England on this wavelength. Power type of hand grenade. Our experts have been wanting to study them. Get over there, beggar. Run me quick about it. Please. My cave. All right. Come on. 
Get up. Get over there. Come on, get up on it, you two. All right, cut it out. On your feet. Over here in the corner. Everything happens to me. Never mind, Harry. We'll get our man out of the prison camp and then worry about the signal to England. The billion outfits are all packed, Bob. All right, you take them, Eric. We haven't much time to lose. I cannot go, sir. My duty is here. Goodbye, sir, and good luck. There must be something we can do for you. Calm yourself, Dobber. Calm yourself. Shouting won't get us anywhere. I don't like it. Answer this, please. Dahlbeck speaking. Of course we want him alive. Can dead men tell us what their mission is? Can dead men tell us why the British intelligence keeps sending agents to this part of Norway? Of course not. His Excellency is most anxious to question them. Yes, three men dressed as winter tourists. With knapsacks. Uh, with knapsacks. Thank you, Miss Beckerin. You have a memory. Perhaps. At least I never forget an injury. I should like to see Eric Falcon being questioned. Very much. Auf Wiedersehen. Of the Indian darling. And don't be late for dinner, please, Otto. I promise. Your Excellency, you were about to remark. Oh, yes. Uh, sometimes you seem to have brains, Norbert. Use them. What would you come to get here if you were a British spy or a Norwegian traitor? Fortunately, I am neither. What do they want in a, in a quiet inland village, a place without fortifications? Factories or military objective. Only a little prison camp. If I were a spy, I'll most certainly stay out of prison and not break into one. Who is the most important man in that prison camp? Why, the commanding officer. Of course. The major. <laughs> Blockhead. <laughs> no. What about your friend, General Hayden, the brains of the Norwegian army? He's the man they want. They are not going to get him. Send an order to the prison camp at once. Yes, Your Excellency. Goodbye, gentlemen. I am being transferred elsewhere. Take me to the officer in charge. We'll not drive in, Corporal. Turn the car around and then report to me. Yes, sir. Hit up. Hit up. Good morning, Herr Major. Well, it's a 
pleasure to see you looking as neat and trim as though you were on parade in our beautiful Berlin. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I uh, don't believe I had the pleasure of... Uh... Of uh, being mentioned in our reports? Oh, yes. We've spoken of you, and very favorably, too. We keep our eyes on everyone. Why, just before I left headquarters, Herr Himmler asked me to congratulate you on the good job you've been doing here. <laughs> Himmler himself? <laughs> He's most kind. Yes, Heinrich isn't a bad fellow, after you get to know him. This is most unexpected. Uh, how can I thank him? Save your thanks for promotion when it comes to you. Heil Hitler. Is the car ready? Yes, sir. We'll be leaving with our prisoner in a few minutes. You'd better hurry if you're going to visit your old friend, Mr. Lamott, in the radio station. You know where it is? Yes, sir. Across the way, outside the gates. Very good, Corporal. Well, you've come to take away a prisoner. Yes, and a very important one. For the security of the state, General Hayden must be transferred immediately. He's ready and waiting in the guard room. Good. You're even more efficient than I expected. Go to the guard room and get our man. Yes, sir. I'll hit left. I'll hit left. And so, dear friends across the sea, if you want to help your folks in Norway, don't hesitate to send them food packages. Coffee, tea, and tobacco will be welcome. And you have my absolute assurance that the parcels will be distributed by the German army. To the German army. To the German army. I'll take over. You will sign here, please. I uh, suppose you're glad to get rid of such an important person. Very glad. Only this morning when the Oberst told me he was to be transferred, he warned me that the commanders who came to Fangslet were probably trying to rescue General Hayden. Is that so? Your Oberst must be a very smart man. <sighs> Clever as a devil. He looks ahead, anticipates everything. And if an attempt should be made to rescue General Hayden, what were your orders from the Oberst? Kill the prisoner. He must not leave Norway alive. General Hayden is too important. After a slight delay, we will continue with the broadcasting of the news of the day. Headlines will be about General Hayden. General Hayden, former chief of staff of the Royal Norwegian Army. This high-ranking officer has been held at the Fangsless prison. Made his escape at 4.21 p.m. today. 4.21 is zero hour. Set your watch. But they will never have the benefit of General Hayden's military ability Unless he has me. He must be on time. Military authorities are still searching for the three British agents who escaped from the Gestapo this morning. Oh, 
general's shoulder. It's broken. Do what you can for him, Eric. We can't stop now. It's going to report us. There'll be bombers overhead in 10 minutes. What do we do? Well, we've got to get out of these clothes and away from this car. We'll go the rest of the way by foot. Spotted them on the road to Maloy. Very good. Any orders, Your Excellency? No orders. Aren't you going to send planes to bomb the car? <laughs> I destroy a perfectly good car. And they left it already. They will take cover in the ranks, Cobra. But sooner or later, they, they will have to come out of the woods and then. Very tired, sir. I'll be all right. After a little rest. He's a lot worse than he admits, Eric. You've got to go back to Fangslet and get a doctor. Someone we can trust. That's taking chances, eh? The general is to reach England alive. He's got to have help. And he will have. I'll phone from a friend's house and have the doctor meet me there and bring him back. Very well. We'll wait here. Got to hold on, sir. Commandos have started already, thousands of them. A fleet of transports, destroyers, airplanes, all to get you safe and alive out of Norway. You won't let them down, will you? No, I, I haven't time, Inga. May I use your phone? I, I want to call a doctor. Is anything wrong? Well, one of our skiing parties has been hurt. One of your skiing parties? Oh, don't tell me if you don't want to. I, I suppose you have a good doctor in mind. Inga, is there one whom a free Norwegian can trust? Of course. And a very good friend of mine. I'll phone him for you. Two four seven, please. I suppose the gentleman is badly hurt. Yes, that's why we couldn't bring him down. I'll take the doctor back with me. Hello. Uh, this is Inga Bakarin speaking. Is the doctor at home? The doctor? Uh, what do you mean, Inga? Oh, I'm so glad to have found you in. You'll want to take care of the gentleman who has been hurt up in the mountains. Yes, another skiing accident. I'll ask him. Is there anyone looking out for your friends? Here, let me talk. Mr. Falcon wants to speak with you, Doctor. Hello. There are two others with the gentleman that are doing what they can, but, but I'm afraid his shoulder is broken, so please hurry. But I must know all you can tell me, so I'll be prepared. Where is the gentleman? Oh, uh, you will take me to him? Very good. I shall come to Miss Beckerin's at once. Four in the party, one wounded. That checks with our report. So you see, they did have to come out. Eric, now that we're together again, can't we make it seem like old times? I've missed you, and I'm sure you've missed me. No, it's no use, Inga. It can never be the same again. You've changed what's happened to you. What happens to any girl when her hero slips away to fight for free Norway? You never realize what happens to those you leave behind. You... You mean the Germans blamed you for my escape? Of course. They found out I brought those supplies for that fishing trip you took. And the whole town saw you leave in my father's boat. Well, I... I realize I didn't play fair, but... Inga, what did they do to you? The usual punishment for aiding an escape. 
took up our food cards, confiscated our property. But you... you seem very comfortable now. Your father must have prospered since the occupation. My father's dead. Oh. Oh, I, I'm very sorry. You should be. You killed him. Yes, when he became desperate, he tried to get away like you did. But you'd taken his good, strong boat and he drowned in a leaky skiff. And you blame me for that. Why didn't you send word to us in England? We'd have come for you as we have for others. How could I send word to anyone? I was in jail for begging. Now do you understand what you did to me? But I had to do it. I couldn't be one of those smug, impractical people who, who made the best of things and went over to the new order. I, I couldn't live in a world without hope or idealism. Don't tell me about your silly idealism. I hate it. I'm sorry. You're sorry. For everything you've done to me, you offer me an apology. Well, that's not enough. Not nearly enough. Come in, Otto. Mr. Falcon, Lieutenant Falcon, but not a uniform. A bad mistake in time of war. The doctor you wanted is outside waiting for direction. Where will he find your injured friend? Handcuff him. May I have my coat? Sure. Mr. Falcon's hat and coat. I wonder if your injured friend will appreciate your stubbornness. <laughs> Take him away! Don't be a coward. Won't go off. He didn't pull the pin. Weren't you once engaged to be married to him? Yes, I was. It never would have worked out. Whatever his faults, he has courage and loyalty. Why, you... Unfortunately, a man in my position cannot afford to trust anyone who is neither brave nor loyal. Otto. Are you telling me? To get out. to think this over, and I hope you decided to cooperate. Where did you leave General Hayden? I won't tell you. Oh, come on. I can't waste any more time on you. If the general is so valuable to you, he's equally valuable to us. Then find him yourself. Oh, don't be silly. My men have ways of making you talk. Most unpleasant ways. Well, all right, I have asked you like a gentleman. I don't like this delay, Harry. No, sir. That except time to locate a whole blooming hospital by now. <laughs> Since you've had some rest, sir, do you feel like going on? I'll try. Good. Harry, according to this map, there's only one trail over the mountains to Malloy. And here's a tourist hut marked about two miles away. Make the general comfortable there and wait three hours. Then if we don't show up, take the general on to Malloy as we plan. Have you got that? Yes, only... Uh... No more arguments, please. We haven't time. Come on, sir. 
protect me. Now, are you ready to resume our conversation? Right. Take him back. Yes. Yes. Better? They, they're up that trail that that leads from the end of the of this fallen garden. Who are you? Good afternoon, sir. I am the doctor. Oh. Where was the gentleman I am to attend? Where's Mr. Falcon? Why didn't he come back with you? My dear sir, I don't know anything about Mr. Falcon, except that he sent me. May as well save time and tell me the other patient is. I'll do nothing of the kind. So? Die then. Two men guard the prisoner down to the car. The rest of you scatter out and find General Hayden. Let's go below and see whether the communications officer has got any news of Captain Owen's part. I don't know. Thanks. Your name? Robert Owen. Your rank? Captain. Special Service Corps. Commonly called the Commandos, I believe. You are the leader of this raiding party? I am. How do you do? I've been looking forward to this handshake. Sit down. Thank you. Would you like a smoke while we have our little conversation? Oh, yes. I'll have a cigarette. Thanks. But as for the rest of your program, I've already answered every question you have a right to ask. Under international law. But, you know, we dropped that. Along with all the rest of the old-fashioned code of honor. So I shall have to force you to tell me where you send General Hayden. And I shall have to force myself not to tell. Come, come, Captain. Surely you don't think me stupid enough to Use the ordinary methods on a man of your courage and willpower. You see, I have been prepared for this situation ever since you got General Hayden out of the prison camp. Uh, doctor, uh, prepare the apparatus. Very good, Harold. Probably know, Captain, that this uh, blood pressure recorder is also the simplest form of lie detector. The doctor will explain the principle. When a lie is told, there is an involuntary reaction, similar to that of pain. Regardless of the subject's willpower, a slight increase in blood pressure is registered on this very sensitive instrument. Suppose I tell you no lies. Suppose I don't tell you anything. If you fail to answer any of my questions, yes or no, Within five seconds, your lieutenant will be instantly shot. Ready, Herr Hobert. What is the captain's normal blood pressure? Blood pressure, 130. Well, Captain, you have one other man still at liberty besides General Hayden, haven't you? Yes, I have. General Hayden is wounded, isn't he? Yes, sir. You planned to get him to a seaport town, didn't you? Yes, sir. To be taken off by a fishing boat? 
No, sir. So, one of your own craft was to pick you up? No, sir. And the last question, strong reaction. Three point that thought, indicating a lie. You see, you have no chance to deceive me. So, General Hayden uh, is to be picked up by British craft. Yes, sir. At what seaport? Bergen? No, sir. Christiansund? No, sir. Warsaw? No, sir. Another falsehood, Herr Holger. So, General Hayden is on his way to Warsaw. And it is there you have to be picked up. Give orders to have every house in Vauxhall searched. Place the road under constant observation. Have airplanes cover the entire Vauxhall district. So you see, for all your courage and willpower, you have told me exactly what I wanted to know. Looks that way. What did you hope to accomplish, you three men, alone in Norway? Don't you know that we have 200,000 men here? Well, before I answer any more questions, uh, may I have another cigarette? Why, certainly. Back up, Governor. We've got to make it. But what if I can't? Come now. You're not the sort of bloke as to do me out of my promotion, are you? Promotion? Well, it seems my escape is more important than I realize. <laughs> Be up, I've been telling you about for the last hour. The government built these shelters a protection for tourists. Oh, oh, then we are tourists, eh? <laughs> what a protection. <laughs> Don't take it so hard, Eric. A man can stand only so much and then and he doesn't know what he's doing or what he's saying. But let's not talk about our mission. What a terrible revenge our pals are going to take for us when they start invading the continent. Well, what, what is the plan? Of course, you don't know. It isn't uh, generally known. It's absolutely a secret. But every steamer coming from Africa these days is loaded with lions. Lions? Horrible, man-eating lions who will be set ashore. These patriotic British animals will form the shock troops of our invasion, raiding the countryside and seeking whom they may devour. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a remarkable man, this Commando Captain. Yes, it isn't everyone who can laugh at us with death staring him in the face. It seems a shame to have him hanged. He would be rather amusing to have around. But I suppose we must do it. We? What do you mean, we? My dear Dolver, what do you suppose I keep you for? <laughs> the men are checking hand grenades and loading ammunition. Do you approve the plan of operations? Here is your map of Marloy, with all objectives now. Your special mission will be to find Captain Owen, bring in his party and General Hayden. I'll go in barge number one with you. Very good, sir. Better check your watch with me. Well, from both to head over. 
General Hayden is not there, and is not expected by any free Norwegian. Every house been searched, every boat checked, not one was fueled or ready to put out to sea. So, uh, no one was ready to hide General Hayden, or to help him to get away, eh? No, sir. Is so be sure his information was correct? Have the prisoners brought up. Prepare a girl out. I want to talk to these two spies alone for a minute. Yes, gentlemen. Two long years I waited for this glorious moment to serve my country. And I so kept no one out with his excellency. I knew then there would be a chance for you to get General Hidden out of Norway. And you shall have that chance. The prisoner have been taken out for execution, sir. For execution? Yes, by Mr. Dahlberg. Mr. Dahlberg knew it wasn't to be on his door. We can't all fight for native land. We can't all be like you. And there are thousands and thousands like myself. We joined a new order, only to tear down at night more than they build up by day. Mr. Dahlberg, I, I owe you an apology. You're coming with us, of course. Yes, the car is waiting. Money, power, everything. Why throw your life away for a general who despised you and a country that's only a name? You'll never understand. No way, and people. There, Governor. Ah, sir. Excellent. I don't believe a doctor could have done any more for me. Maybe it's just as well the doctor didn't come. You know, I always say that a good dinner is the finest medicine for anything what ails you. Uh, let's see about it. <laughs> you know, whoever figured out that iron ration certainly knew what he was doing. <laughs> I originated it for the Norwegian army. You don't say. Well, aren't you the far-sighted bloke? <laughs> Hello, Harry. Hello! They found the car, sir, abandoned at the end of the Svalengarten. Swallengarden does not end. It continues as a, as a footpath. Uh, come here. A trail over the mountains to Malor. Eh? Yes, sir. We'll see. Shall I go with you, sir? Uh, no, uh, just stay here. Sorry, sir, but we're late already. Come along. We 
has checked every output. There is no sign of the escape prisoners. We will drive to the end of the trail to thanks them. Come on. Better leave me here. I can't go on. Of course you can. Now here's a way to go on. Bob, will you help me put this boat in the water? No use, Harry. It's full of holes. I'm afraid there's no way we can give a signal. How about a beacon fire? Our troops wouldn't see it. Get to be a big fire. On an ice plank. Well, let's find one. Rest here, sir. We'll be back shortly. Come on, Harry. Harry, this seems as good as any. Why not set fire to this coal bunker? He's high enough to be seen, all right. And a military objective, too. Come on. for nothing. Where is your captain? Never mind, sir. He'll come back. When he returns, I promise that you all would be executed this morning, and I keep my word. I've been looking for you. Did you find Captain Owen and his father? Not yet, sir. They must be delayed. Are we leaving already, sir? We've accomplished all our other objectives. We can't let Captain Owen down, sir. Intelligence reports that two full German divisions are on their way. Take cover. What's that? We didn't shell anything that far away, sir. Someone's fired that as a beacon. Take some of your men and investigate. Very good, sir. Come on, boys. Our game has come to an end, Captain. Your end. I'm afraid the ending won't be as you planned, Von Ritter. Oh? You and your men are covered by Sergeant Harry Hall. The sergeant is an excellent marksman. You will find out if you don't believe me. Reporting visitors. They're almost here. Execute this man immediately. Sir? Shoot him, you fool! All right, well, they got Falcon. Oh, that's too bad. He was a good soldier. 
General Hayden has been wounded. We'd better get him aboard quickly. A button. Are you quite comfortable? Yes. Thank you. I look you up at our prison camp when we get back to England. I hope you never find me there. You planning to escape? Why not? You've shown me what an able man can do in the enemy's country. You forget that England isn't an occupied country. And never will be. You once asked me what we three could accomplish against your 200,000 Nazis here in Norway. Don't you realize that we weren't three alone? That we were welcomed and helped because we came to set a man free, not to make him a slave. Think that over. 